In the last year, Immigration and Customs Enforcement agents removed 3,200 immigrants from the Denver area. They were in the country illegally. This Sunday, that number could grow. NBC News is reporting that ICE will be rounding up 2,000 immigrants across the U.S. who are still in the country despite being given deportation orders. NBC sources say Denver could be one of the cities where the targeted enforcements will happen. ICE won't confirm any details about that. Mayor Michael Hancock spoke to the media today where he said the city will not work with ICE. Let me be clear. We do not assist with immigration enforcement in Denver. In fact, we started a legal defense fund to help with these situations. So word of those raids have raised quite a few questions about the process of becoming a citizen in this country. We researched it today and found out exactly what we expected to find. The process is complex. You've heard the phrase path to citizenship before. That's actually a bit deceiving because there are quite a few paths you could take to citizenship. All of them start with achieving permanent resident status. In other words, getting your green card. It's called a green card because it's green in color, by the way. There are all sorts of avenues to apply for a green card, like marrying a U.S. citizen, seeking asylum, or working in the U.S. After you apply for permanent resident status or get that green card, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services told us it could take anywhere from 7 to 13 months to process that application. Once you get that green card, you have to hold it anywhere from three to five years before you can apply for actual citizenship. You have to get all your documents together, pay a big price. The average application for citizenship is more than $700. Then the government processes that citizenship application, which we're told can take anywhere from six months to a year, depending on where you live. So the whole process can take between four and seven years. We were also curious if people who've been deported can still try to apply for a legal path to citizenship. ICE told us they can request permission to enter the U.S. Granted, they haven't committed serious crimes while they were here the first time. So, by the way, if you were deported and wanted to seek a legal way to re-enter this country, the fees associated with the form you have to fill out total about $1,000. Hey, if your weekend commute takes you along US 36, consider this your warning. It is going to be a mess in the eastbound direction at Church Ranch as crews work on fixing that giant crack in the road there. It's not supposed to look like that. That crack is whack. No word yet on what caused it. The good news is that if this happens again in, say, the year 2050, RTD will have a train to help you get around that. The Secretary of State's office has approved new petitions to recall two Democratic state lawmakers. Groups wanting to recall Senators Brittany Pedersen and Pete Lee can now start gathering signatures. They'll need about 11,000 by September 10th to make the ballot for Senator Lee's recall effort, around 18,000 for Pedersen by that same day. People wanting to recall Governor Jared Polis are currently gathering signatures as well, and he spoke to quite a few of them today. Governor Polis continues to mark a lot of firsts here in Colorado. First Jewish governor, first openly gay governor. Now he's the first Democrat to speak to a high-profile conservative conference in Denver. When the invitation first came in, uh, my staff uh, thought it was from the Western Conservation Summit. So Democrats have been invited to the Western Conservative Summit before, but Governor Polis is the first to accept that invitation. In his speech, Polis talked about his success signing bills with bipartisan support and spoke about the importance of crossing party lines on important issues. When we close ourselves off from discussion and debate, when we reject the possibility of hearing and understanding other perspectives, it threatens the fabric of our democracy. Republican Senator Cory Gardner will be speaking at the summit tonight. The Western Conservative Summit gives us a chance to examine the state of conservative politics in this state. Kyle had conversations with three Republicans who don't always agree on policy and tactics. State, state Representative Mark Baisley of Roxborough Park, columnist Mario Nicholas, and Nine News political expert Kelly Maher. Do you think that it's wise for Republicans to spend their money and time trying to recall the governor? I don't know, that is an awfully tall mountain to climb. I mean, 600 plus thousand votes, that's what, 10,000 a day or something until the, the, the due date. I wouldn't uh, dissuade folks who want to get involved in that, but I won't be participating directly myself. 
Uh, from my perspective, I, I think that you, you look at this, and I'd written a column several months ago that talked about how recalls were the new norm, but a recent column, I pointed out that these recalls have been, in my opinion, devastatingly bad for Republicans. Um, that what, you, what you're seeing is you're seeing Democrats who are getting uh, fundraising advantages, they are showing their organizational prowess, their ability to message, and meanwhile, you have recalls, like the rec recall against Governor Polis, where you've got three different groups on the Republican side or on the conservative side arguing with each other, spending more time doing that, uh, and, and uh, you know, like Mark said, likely they're not going to get it done. As for the recall of Governor Post, do you think it's wise for Republicans to spend time and money on that? I think that right now the biggest issue we should be talking about is the Taxpayer Bill of Rights and the National Popular Vote. I think both of those are issues that are good for Republicans to be talking about. They're things that we are on the right side of history on, and they are things that exercise the base. I also think that we need to start talking more about Cory Gardner because that is going to be the race that everybody's going to be paying attention to. As we head into the Western Conservative Summit this weekend, what's the state of conservatism in Colorado? I think, uh, you know, I think there's a differentiation sometimes between conservatism and republicanism. I think the Republican Party right now is at a very existential crisis situation. Uh, they, they, I think they are bordering on tearing over into being uh, a California Republican Party, uh, where, where not only are they not going to win and have any leverage of power, but becoming almost completely irrelevant. Um, and and, and <laughs> to be fair, I think the one, the one group that can save them from that is the Democratic Party, uh, who if they, if they go too far to the left, if they, um, if they create policies that are so far beyond what normal Coloradans have, uh, they might save the Republican Party. The only danger of us coming, uh, looking like California is we could be in a very long-term uh, minority position as a minority party. I hope, hope that's not the case because folks that move here from other states, they came from a more liberal state, they're leaving what wasn't working for them, they're coming here, and, and I, I hope that they, and this will be some messaging from me, and I think the rest of the party is going to be doing this as well, is to just remind them of the uniqueness of Colorado. Let's not turn Colorado into California or wherever you came from. We need to try to talk to just the Colorado conservatives because Western conservatives have always been fundamentally different than people we have seen in other states on the East Coast, on the West Coast, really libertarian-esque. All right, Kelly Maher, thank you so much for coming in. I hope both of you have a great weekend. We, well, we might, we might be here this weekend, <laughs> any minute, literally. Thank you for coming in. My pleasure. Well, you heard her say she's due any day now. She told Kyle that she would come in to talk as long as she wasn't in labor. All those conversations, by the way, can be found in full on the next YouTube page. So we're all for throwing a fun birthday party around, around, around here, as long as that birthday party does not cross the line. The line into the bike lane that runs in front of Union Station. RTD celebrating its big 50th anniversary this year. So they've been doing a few different things to mark that milestone, like setting up a party in a bus near the bike lane with a table in front of the bike lane. Some bicyclists didn't care for that too much. Uh, they reported it as crossing the line. You can send us your photos of people crossing the line next at 9news.com or use the hashtag HeyNext. I'm a total square, but I learned a lot about pot this week. You can too if you give a new podcast a listen. It's the first time we've gotten to go fishing together, I think, ever, right, Cody? Yeah. yeah. You know what Fridays mean around here. That's my good news of the day. Get to go fishing with my boy. Your good news is next.
Welcome back on a beautiful summer Friday in July in Colorado. Warm with a few afternoon thunderstorms that we're tracking into the evening. Shouldn't affect the game. Fingers crossed. First pitch 640 and there's a little thunder and lightning out there. Everybody heading for the hills trying to beat the heat. We'll continue to see highs above average in the mid 90s both Saturday and for Sunday. And with this warm high pressure ridge keeping the storm track to the north, only a little bit of moisture will be allowed in. But enough that with heating of the day, look at the light show from DIA out to the well, Fort Morgan and Sterling and all the way out into the North Platte area. We'll see some scattered thunderstorms tonight with wind and lightning, not a lot of rain. All of these storms really kind of enhanced during the evening hours in northeastern Colorado. We're tracking Tropical Storm Barry set to make landfall tomorrow morning around sunrise outside of New Orleans. Around here, a little wind and lightning, stronger storms from Sterling out to North Platte and then skies clear with a mostly sunny day. Another warm day on the way as we kick off the weekend. Mid 60s tonight, a little rain and thunder possible. A few more thunderstorms possible as we move through Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Temperatures climbing back into the 90s and staying there. But Steve, it's still a great night to get out with the dogs and the kids and enjoy this beautiful Colorado Friday. Heck yeah, you'll probably get a good sunset too, Kathy. I think so. Thank you. May I make a recommendation? This is where we point you towards something that is not ours, but is worth your time. So I got a chance to check out the first episode of On Something, a new podcast from Colorado Public Radio on life after legalization of marijuana. The first episode is entertaining and comprehensive. It's a look at the prohibition of cannabis and then the efforts to legalize it. Anne Maria Watt and her team have something special going on there. We have a link to the podcast on the next Facebook page. If there's a podcast you wanna recommend, by the way, reach out to us with the hashtag HeyNext. Well, President Trump will finally join his predecessors on the wall of the state capitol. Next month, a portrait of the 45th president of the United States will be hung in the third floor rotunda alongside our nation's other past leaders. There will be an unveiling ceremony on August 1st. That's exactly one year after supporters raised the $10,000 needed for that portrait. Former Colorado Senate President Kevin Grantham started a GoFundMe to collect that money. That happened after a prankster put a portrait of Russian President Vladimir Putin where President Trump's portrait should have been at the Capitol. The GoFundMe raised more than $10,800. The additional money was donated to the Rocky Mountain Honor Flight. Five of Colorado's seven House representatives have voted to extend the compensation fund for the victims of the 9-11 attacks. The House passed a bill today that would extend it through 2092, essentially making the fund permanent. 12 members of Congress voted to re not to reauthorize that. One of those no votes came from Republican Congressman Ken Buck. We've reached out to Kev Congressman Buck's office. They haven't returned our request for comment yet to get an answer on why he voted no. Democratic Congressman Ed Perlmutter did not vote on the bill, but he was a co-sponsor of the bill. His office says that he was out of Washington with a family obligation. He quit his day job and chased a dream. I mean, I decided it was either now or never, you know. But his dream job always brings him back to Colorado. I will always call it home. My good news is I get to serve my country, um, and that's an awesome thing. Today, we're going to end our day the same way these folks started it, with good news.
A lot of people fantasize about quitting their jobs and traveling the world to pursue a lifelong dream. Not many people do it, unless you're like Nate Luby. He was your average Coloradan working as a line cook, then a brewer for Upslope in Boulder, who would explore Colorado's outdoors in his free time. But he decided to take a chance on his dream job, and it was a risk worth taking. I've always had this weird knack for, I guess, taking my passions and turning them into a career. I grew up going on hikes and I'd always take these silly little photos on my phone. And as the phone cameras got better, I realized my photos got better and I, I got addicted to that. And I, I just one day sucked it up. I saved up some money and I bought myself a nice camera and it was just like immediately addicting. I couldn't, I couldn't stop going out and taking photos every day after work. And I have to be honest, it sort of just happened by accident. I was you know, still just working a day job, um, you know, working as a brewer at Upslope. And every day after work, I would just run to the mountains, hike to a summit and take some photos. And I just, I started eventually getting photos good enough that people wanted to buy them. And I, I realized that I was making enough money on the weekends that I maybe didn't have to have my, <laughs> my 40, 50 hour a week day job. And um, about three years ago, I got an offer for an extended project, like three, four months long with a travel guide to the point where I couldn't use vacation time and I decided it was either now or never, you know. If I, I either had to turn down the job and stay at my day job or quit and accept this long project and I decided that was it, just jump in head first. There's months where I do great and then there's an entire month where I don't earn anything and it's, it's kind of fun, I guess it's scary, <laughs> keeps, me, keeps me on my toes but it's nice because it doesn't allow you to relax. I'm always learning and improving. I'm not the only person trying to do this. I definitely have, I have my dream job and I have like 10,000 other people's dream job. And so, always gotta keep pushing. You know, I spent 30 years hiking around Colorado and I, I feel like I know a thousand great spots. And then every time I talk to somebody else who likes to go hiking and camping, they mention a great place that I've never even heard of. It's amazing. It's. <laughs> It's a huge state that's just like a, a non-stop, all-you-can-eat buffet of beautiful landscapes and scenery. That's super unusual, not just around the world, but honestly, even in the United States, not a lot of states feature that. Um, it's, it's one of the coolest things. You don't have to put in a 15-mile hike to see beautiful views in Colorado. They're just everywhere, and we live amongst them. It's one of my favorite things about this state, and it's one of the reasons I will always call it home. That was through the lens of Nine News video producer Tyler Lahanis. If you want to see more of Nate's work, head on over to the next YouTube channel or ninenews.com where we have behind the scenes content and more of his photography from around the world. It's pretty cool. So we like to end our Fridays here on a high note with your good news. That's next.
We rose before the sun to hear your good news and photojournalist Tom Cole found it at the Arvada Reservoir. It's beautiful. It's a good way to start a day. Just see the sun coming out and see the dawn from here next to the dam is, is beautiful. My good news is we are alive, we are healthy. This is another day, it's a gift and just be happy. We're feeling a little squishy this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you were up a little late, you drink a little too much beer and you wake up in the morning feeling kind of squishy. Yeah, that's, <laughs> we're feeling a little squishy this morning. <laughs> squishy. My good news for today is uh, I got to see my son for the first time in about two years or so. And that's my good news for the day, get to go fishing with my boy. My good news is today is vacation. Sunday we'll be headed to New York. Check out a Yankee game. My good news is uh, like where I work, it's a nice day. Good to be outdoors. My good news is I get to serve my country um, and that's an awesome thing. And I get to be part of a, the biggest brotherhood in the world. Uh, and it's gonna be an honor to serve with those, those kind of people and the, be surrounded by amazing people who are gonna teach me how to be a better person. My good news is I got my second baby due in October. First time I've ever been skunked at Arvada Reservoir. At least truck stops open, it'll give me some biscuits and gravy, help get rid of the squishy. <laughs> I was feeling a little squishy after the uh, Hootie and the Blowfish concert last night. Hey, Doug wrote in, said yesterday was my 71st birthday. Happy birthday, Doug, we'll see you next time.